Good morning folks, Liberty Garden, and today I'm doing another quick little video, kind of show you a composting system, well not system, but cost composting method that I use in the house to capture all of the leftovers from the kitchen, uh, leftover kitchen scraps, organic, I mean not organic, but uh, vegetable kitchen scraps. They, instead of going to the trash can, they go into this old trash can that sits here the whole year. And I put them in here. Anything, eggs, old napkins, onions, whatever you see. I mean, whatever is left over in the kitchen comes in here. And then I, every now and then I'll cover it with some leaves just to get some uh, browns in here. But look. This is something that may gross you out, but it's good. These are not maggots, they are the black soldier fly larva. You see them there? Now, those little boogers, they are the larva of the black soldier fly, which is a very beneficial insect. Uh, the black soldier fly larva is a moth. It's got no mouth. It doesn't eat, so it doesn't go into your house trying to look for food or anything like that. It basically lives to mate, lay eggs, and the cycle repeats, and then it dies. So it usually lays its eggs in the, in a place where there's uh, organic matter for the larva to eat, and then it goes into a little cocoon, and then the fly, the, the black soldier fly emerges. Now, people who have aquaponic systems or chickens use these little larvae because they're very very good for for the chickens or the fish I use them because they're excellent composters so a lot of times when you have a a plant that needs calcium like a, I, I know Uncle Al suggested that I put some calcium on my tree some broken eggshells on my apple tree a lot of times even though they're dry broken eggshells the nutrient is not available if it's not in the presence of something else I think that uh, in order for a plant to absorb calcium from, from broken eggshells, the soil must also have some manganese, I think, mag mag magnesium or manganese, something like that, uh, to absorb it. And that's usually present in other, in other leftover scraps that you have in here. Uh, fruits have it, etc. And uh, when it goes through the digestive system of, the, of these little critters, then that, uh, that element becomes available. Uh, that's why uh, warm co composting is so good, and that's why this is also a form of uh, composting with the using uh, using uh, the black sol soldier fly larva. So the black soldier fly larva will eat anything in here. As you can see, there's hardly any flies in here. There is no flies, and I keep this thing a little bit open, so that the so when the fly emerges, it goes out. Uh, otherwise, it dies in here if I keep it completely closed. So I, I leave a I leave it open with this two by four just. Uh, close it like this and leave it leave a little gap open just to avoid the rain from com coming in uh, but anyway uh, the what these guys poop out these guys finish all the food and if flies come in and lay eggs for maggots and stuff they eat those too so I never see I've never not yet once seen a, a, a regular house fly maggot in here and it doesn't smell or anything uh, every now and then I'll just throw some some leaves if, it, if if I have too much left over in here and the activity of the fly is, is a little bit slow like in very early spring or winter but otherwise they take care of business I mean as you can see they're eating it they're eating a uh, an apple right there that was one of the fallen apples from the granny Smith um, and then when they poop the the earthworms eat their poop and then they poop it again so it's going through two cycles so by the time uh, this uh, this compost is ready it is nothing but uh, richness for everything so every year in winter time, once once these things have done their cycle and everything, uh, and once this trash can is about three quarters full, I'll come out here. Uh, I'll mix more leaves and stuff like that, and then I'll empty it into a, a wheelbarrow, sift it, and I use that to put around my plants. So that's a very very rich uh, compost, and that's what I put on my trees, on my on my apple trees, my peach trees. Uh, I sometimes mix it in my raised beds. Um, but that's that's about it i mean and uh, it, it's a slow very slow process i mean I, it's not like a compost pile but um, the reason i stopped doing composting in my backyard like compost piles in my backyard is because it attracts rodents and uh, it's a increased habitat and really if you're not 
adding manure to your compost pile you're just cooking off slow cooking off leaves and grass clippings it works it's good but real the, the real benefit comes from when you add manure so i don't have any rabbit or chicken or cow or horse manure in here so that's why i just up to do this and let the little worms do their cat throw their castings out there so anyway folks uh, i just thought i'd show you this i mean yeah if you're a little bit uh if things gross you out I mean, my wife will not come out here i'll tell you that much she will throw away leftovers into a trash can before coming out here and, and putting them in here because she's, she's just she's just grossed out by these little uh, larvae so i i take the all the organic stuff and just throw it out myself um and some people get grossed out with that so I'll, I'll be doing a video a little bit later today uh i'm going to be planting my my potatoes again in here uh, my, I have a bunch of potatoes from the first harvest that I already have ice on them and I'll be planting them here later today and uh, oh, actually here, here you go. Let me, let me, I'll show you something real quick here gotta keep this thing locked this, this crazy dog of mine just dug out all my uh, if you remember I had all these planted here with a sweet uh, sweet potato and this stupid dog here dug them all out so I just have that little patch right there but anyway if you look at this soil here look at this there's a lot of broken eggshells here and that's because in the past i've added soil from uh, uh, or compost from from that bin over there that i just showed you there's a lot of eggshells here these are all dry so anyway uh, i'll be doing that a little later today and uh, potatoes take about uh, 100 to 110 days if i put them out today and before my first frost, that's about 100 days exactly. So I'm gonna do that. I know it's still a little hot, but if I wait till the end of uh, end of August, there's no guarantee it's gonna get that much cooler. And I am really gonna be behind the curve for the first frost. Anyway, until next time, folks. Talk to you later.